Welcome back to Mini Mayhem. I'm Ostrich Vox, and yeah, that's right. Welcome back to Mini Mayhem. You think just because the show's over means this series is over? Um, no, there's still a lot to talk about in the world of Star vs. the Forces of Evil. Like the aftermath of that grand finale. And even though that the show itself might be over, is the story of Star still over? I mean, quite literally, the finale left everyone begging for more even leading to a petition that has thousands of signatures, a lot of those signatures coming from in the first few hours of the finale's release, demanding a continuation of the show. And can you really blame people? After Earth and Mooney was cleaved together, there is a lot of WTF questions about how the world's going to work now. There was one scene in particular that set up the future of the series, Mina Loveberry's exit. After magic is destroyed for good, Mina Loveberry is revealed to have survived the final confrontation, except severely drained from losing her Solarian magic. Her cheekbones extremely visible, and as Moon remarks, she's nowhere near well, physically or mentally. The icing on the cake? Mina is shot at by a monster, which probably cemented to Mina that removing magic has only put her in even more danger, as she's still a walking target to all monsters. Although I doubt many would seriously go out of their way to harm her. Mina elaborates that even if she is killed, her morals and ideas will stick around, more or less telling everyone that as long as there are people out there who agree with her, she'll never really be gone, escaping into the forest with Manfred. That's a little bit more than a stone left unturned. That's a newly established dangling plot point in front of our very eyes, one that we just can't quite reach. So between Mina still on the loose and probably planning some kind of uprise, again, alongside with the two dimensions Earth and Muni having to adjust while being one big dimension, it's hard to say Star had a 100% conclusive ending and that there's nowhere to go from here. There's actually a lot to go from here. What are the politics of this world now? Is there a monarch? Will Eclipsa be queen of Muni Earth? Earthny? Me Earth? What are we gonna call this place? Or will it be democracy, like how it already is on Earth? Will there still be a president? Will it just be the United States or the entire world? Is Echo Creek the new capital due to Muni Castle and the Monster Temple being there? Eh, not really sure, but one thing is for certain. Star and Marco kept Meteora and Mariposa's promise that they would be able to grow up together. Yet, it doesn't mean they'll necessarily grow up together peacefully, as these unresolved plot threats set the stage for more to come. While I'm not really sure we're going to get another season, I do believe it's possible that Star vs. The Forces of Evil could get a follow-up TV movie in the near future, either on Disney Channel itself or even on the Disney Plus streaming service, just like the upcoming Phineas and Ferb movie that will be exclusive to that service. Now while this is pure speculation, it does go a little bit deeper. Darren Nefsey did recently retweet a fan's wish for a TV movie before swiftly unretweeting it. While she could just been avoiding stirring up any hype, I'm going to look at it at the exact opposite, as if she was possibly planting a clue for people to briefly see, alluding to the fact that there could be a special or movie in the future. And we already have the plot, Mina Lutberry's last hurrah, but she's not alone, as there's another villain who didn't even pop up in this final season, Seth of Subtarsis. Now, if you're familiar with the channel, you know I've talked about Seth many, many times. Long story short, he's a Septarian, possibly Toffee's master, and he wanted to commit human genocide. Much like how Mina wants to commit monster genocide. Now, Seth seemed to be the one responsible for the death of Moon's mother, Comet Butterfly. As when she invited him to a Moon monster treaty, he simply responded that he wanted Comet dead. And as far as we're concerned from the Book of Spells, Seth was never killed. His status was unknown meaning that he's likely still out there. A TV movie could see Seth and Mina teaming up, two foes from two different paths of life joining forces to get rid of Eclipsa, Star, and Moon, before stabbing each other in the back because their goals literally conflict with each other. However, I do plan on talking a little bit more about Mina in a separate video, so stay tuned for that. Now, if you ask me, I would rather take a TV movie over a fifth season, as while it would be fun to see episodes taking place in that new status quo, it's not really needed. A TV movie could explore that just fine, while also giving us an intimidating threat to boot, and allowing us to see how Star would combat such a force without the aid of magic, how different that world is entirely. Now, I mentioned this in my breakdown of the episode Cleaved, but I will be making a video talking about all the unanswered questions Star left, so if you're wondering what about this or that, don't worry, we'll touch on it soon. 
But for now, would you guys rather have a fifth season or a TV movie of Star vs. the Forces of Evil? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below or tweet your thoughts at RoundTableVids. And for my own pitches, you can find me at Austin Fox. We're also on Instagram. Special thanks to Art with Coda for an amazing thumbnail. For more of his art, you can find him on Tumblr and Instagram at Art with Coda. And subscribe to his YouTube channel. Link in the description. Help the Rental grow by either becoming a member of this channel or supporting us over at Patreon. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe to the Round Table for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. Ostrich Vox, signing out. Hey everyone, just letting you know a pre-recorded message that we will be at MomoCon 2019. We'll be there all four days, but I know what you're thinking, what about the panels? And to that my friend, I have an answer. Friday at 2.30 we'll be on the Channel Frederator panel, talking about our experiences as content creators. Then on Saturday at 4pm, we have the first ever animation showcase with a bunch of other content creators in the cartoon community. Cosmodor, Rebel Taxi, Nintendo. Saber Spark, you name it. We'll be showing off a bunch of animated projects, such as Hasbin Hotel, whose creator will also be there, Logon Gulch, Amoda and Nepson, and more. And yes, we will be showing exclusive footage you cannot see anywhere else. Well, I mean, until the actual panel, where I'm sure it'll be live streamed and you can. But you guys get the point. After that, our final panel will be Saturday at 7. Another Steven Universe of the Fan of this panel. Us, Mackenzie Atwood, Slice of Otaku, Rose's Universe, and Michaela Deese, the voice of Amethyst. Oh yeah, did I mention this TV Universe cast will be there? Zach Callison, Dee Dee Magna Hall, Michaela Dietz, and Estelle. Well, Estelle's only gonna be on Thursday, but Estelle. Get hyped for MomoCon, guys. It's so close, and I have a feeling it'll be one of the best years yet. Hope to see some of your beautiful faces there.